Hey guys, and welcome to what is my first video of the year. And having said that, I'd like to wish you all a Happy New Year, or should I say a belated Happy New Year. Yeah, so for this video, I'm doing something a little different, which, as you can see, instead of having a camera in front of this on the screen, I've actually got a telescope. So, yeah, because I recently got myself into the hobby of uh, doing some astronomy and stargazing, so... Yeah, and um, I had quite a lot of fun going out, uh, viewing the stars quite a few nights, you know, with uh, this little telescope. I actually had a Celestron one before this, which I didn't actually like as much, uh, mainly because the tripod uh, caused quite a few problems. So instead I had a, a little digging round and I came up with this one. Yeah, this one's a Skywatch or Star Travel 80. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great little scope. It's really good. As you can see, it's quite a short size. It's not that big. It's, you know... I think across is probably just over 40 centimetres. If you don't know much about um, telescopes, then I can give you a little quick um, guide around it. Yeah, I don't know a great deal about them myself because I'm basically just learning. So, yeah, obviously this um, telescope, is a, as I said, it's a sky watcher. And yeah, it's a great little scope. Quite, I've really enjoyed using it so far. So, and obviously the bits that you've got here, this part is your finder scope, which allows you to align targets. Um, through the through your eyepiece, you know, so the two kind of work in sync. It makes it easier, basically, to find uh, targets in the sky. So yeah, there's your finder scope. So it's got a little light which comes on, which you know, when you'll be able to see it. It comes on, and it's uh, no, you won't be able to see it here. So yeah, a little beam comes on, and it helps you find your target. So yeah, if you look through. Also at the back is, of course, this is where you put in your eyepieces. This is what they call the diagonal adapter. And um, basically that's where you insert the eyepieces, which you look through to obviously um, see your, your subjects. And I've already got several eyepieces which I use. Yeah, so I've got a few eyepieces already that I use um, with this telescope. And as I said, I've been having a lot of fun just uh, getting out looking at the stars and things. I found that the only thing about looking up at the stars I live in a kind of urban environment, well I do, I kind of live in a kind of suburb town. Um, the, the views you're going to get for the telescope of the stars aren't going to be brilliant because of, the, because of the light pollution that you get off, you know, nearby light sources such as street lights. In order to get the really good views you need to essentially go out into the, the countryside, rural areas to get better views of the, of the, of the night stars and the constellations and, and things like that. You can still view the planets from like a suburb kind of area but you won't be able to view the stars very well they'll just be kind of like kind of dimly lit in the sky you'll see them as kind of dots but that's kind of from what my perspective what i've seen so in short yeah, i'm gonna to have to go out adventure forth somewhere sometime and uh, into the countryside somewhere and hopefully try and get some better views uh, with the scope and this is actually what they call i think a short tube refractor scope and um, refractor scopes, I think, is certainly one among the most commonly used scopes. Anyway, before I bore you all to death further on this, the subject of telescopes and you know and the various features and things, if you're not really into um, uh, astronomy or uh, telescopes or anything, the idea of what I'm doing for this video is basically to talk a bit about um, the astrophotography side of things because yeah, because I've done just a little bit of astrophotography with this scope. Yeah, I've just been outside and I've taken some shots of the moon with it. In fact, I've tried it with both cameras I've got, which is the Olympus EM1 Mark II and the Lumix GX80. So, and the results have been quite good. And in this video, I will show you some of the shots I've managed to take with uh, both cameras. The first shots I took were actually with the Lumix GX80. And um, yeah, the shots turned out pretty well. The only problem is, though, you will find when you're using, when you plug in your camera to the telescope, now at this point, obviously, the telescope is now effectively uh, your camera's lens. So the issue with that is, uh, if you're pointing up at the moon, for example, it's, you're, it's just going to be a really bright blob in the sky. So you you need to actually dial back your shutter speed to a decent level where the moon is no longer be, going to be actually super bright. And the challenge with that is also trying to get it in focus. I mean, you can actually... I suppose you can use, uh, if you set your focus peaking on your camera, that way you can, it'll probably help try and get the, the image in focus. And uh, But if you're looking at a big white, bright ball or kind of crescent shaped ball of or whatever phase the moon's at, it's, it's going to be quite difficult for you to actually always 
properly ascertain whether uh, your image is in sharp focus. Another thing, obviously, just experiment. What I did is I just experimented with my shot speeds, uh, taking various shots and then testing the focus and dialing it back using the these uh, focus knobs here on the telescope. So what I've got here now is my Lumix GX80 and what it's actually got in here is a little adapter which is um, designed for attaching to the telescope so and um, I don't know I can't remember exactly what they're called I think they're called um, T2 adapters I got this one on Amazon um, I can't remember exactly what it costs but I don't think it was too dear yeah so obviously what you do is this will allow you to attach this to the scope in fact what happens is there's usually a diagonal piece which we would actually in this instance take off the telescope and then you would feed this on in its place the only problem is though with attaching your camera directly to the telescope is it won't be able to achieve focus straight away because um, what will happen is I think it'll struggle to actually try and find focus so what you need to do is kind of add an additional element which uh, I think they call a spacer so so here that's what this little piece does it's just like an extension tube basically so what happens is you can actually just fit it on yeah you can just basically screw it on like that screw on like that and you screw that in place there's actually I think two of these but um, I find one sufficient so there you go that's you now got a kind of super long <laughs> looks like a kind of Pinocchio camera now doesn't it with a, with a big long nose but yeah so but yeah, with that, that's what happens is that you take that and you can now slot that into your telescope the downside I find though with uh, using this with my telescope is I find that, you know the tripod just can't withstand the weight of both the scope and the camera yeah and the reason why is I think the bolt on it kind of comes slack after a while with the with the added weight yeah because what I found I had to do is um, use um, a spanner to actually tighten up the bolt on my tripod for the telescope uh, in order to for it to maintain the weight of um, both the scope and the camera on it so yeah that's basically what happens this will attach on to the the end of the telescope and obviously through that you can actually see the image come through here if you've got a Lumix GX80 or probably even any maybe any uh, Panasonic uh, mirrorless camera if you want to actually use it with a telescope and you have difficulty letting you do it what you can do is you go into the menu and I think what it's in one of these custom settings yeah because uh, if you're struggling to try and get the camera for example, say if you've got the this this camera, the Lumix GX80, and you're struggling to try and find a way to use your scope, and it wouldn't let you use it without because there's no actual lens attached to the camera. What you want to do is find the option for shoot without lens, and switch that on. That will allow you to actually use the scope as your actual lens itself. Yeah, it's in the custom menu guide, and it's uh, page nine, I think. So there you go. So what I've actually done here is I've attached the Lumix GX80 um, to the telescope just to give a little demonstration as to what it all looks like. So there you go, that's the camera attached and uh, that's obviously there's the adapter piece and the extension tube which is attaching directly to the, you know, the telescope itself. In fact, just to show, I can actually unscrew, unscrew it and it slots out like that. I better watch, this is actually finally balanced on on a book underside <laughs> so and again so what you do is you just slot that in and tighten that up and that's how it is that's the uh, that's how it attaches and once you switch on your camera again as I said make sure you're shooting without the lens option is switched on and you're, if you're using the Panasonic GX80 camera like I've got yeah make sure that option is switched on and you can use the focus on knobs here to actually you know do the actual focusing for the camera itself so what I'll do now is I can show you some pictures that I've taken with the Linux GX18 and also the Olympus CM1 cameras
So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little video. Something a bit different anyway, because uh, and I've been meaning to experiment with astrophotography for quite a while. And uh, yeah, I've, obviously I've taken quite a few shots in the moon in the past, just using my telephoto lens uh, on my actual camera. But this is something a bit different, and I think, you know, it'd be quite good and enjoyable way to try and get pictures. Again, I might experiment a bit more with it in the future, just to see if we can probably try an eyepiece projection method to capture the images, which I think, again, obviously you can use with your camera in conjunction with the, uh, with that. And I think that involves using your camera as well, the eyepiece projection method. But I think we can get to that some other time. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks again for watching. And please feel free to subscribe for more videos if you want to see more content. And I'll see you in the next one.